Hi guys, um, Lisa Bray I think it was, wanted to know about sharpening pricking irons. It's really easy, um, they don't have to be exceptionally sharp, they just have to be nice and neat without any snaggy bits on. Um, I noticed on this Dixon's the other day that it had a couple of snaggy bits on, so this is a perfect opportunity to do the video. What do you need? You need some little needle files, they don't have to be expensive ones. These ones are from home base, as long as they're nice and fine. Um, and Preferably have a couple of very thin ones in there, then that's all you need. And of course, some good old wet and dry. If you have a strop, that's great. This is just a bit of suede loaded up with a bit of autosol. It just helps um, to finish them off. So what do you do? Get a very thin needle file and then lining it up with the teeth. This is quite a good one to show it with because it's quite quite a good size you just quite literally run the needle file up the teeth it won't take much at all so don't go overboard and that is quite literally enough to take off any snaggy bits and sharpen them up and you see I'm only doing about three three sort of bits per tooth three you know, sort of drags per tooth. Angle wise, you can see just about C here. I think you quite literally you're just going with the angle of the metal. There you go. That shows you there. So you are just quite literally just laying uh, the needle file onto the metal and just pulling it over. So that's that's on a obviously a nice wide number seven. Um this is another number seven that seems to have got a bit worse for wear. I think I had a little damp corner in my workshop, damp window sill, and that's where these ones were. So if you were refurbishing um a quick iron, then you might need to spend a little bit more time on it. I should probably spend a fair bit of time getting this all back up together because this, this was one of my original ones from when I was an apprentice so it's a bit of a special one you can quite literally see where um, the tool has been you see it's just starting to look sort of quite polished on the end um, doesn't take much at all to get that Excuse that beeping that's going on in the background. I have a silly alarm clock set to remind me that I've actually got to go home sometimes. So that's already looking a lot better than it was on one side. And then on this side as well. It's quite a quick process. It's not something you need to sort of labour about too much. Um, this part of it, at least. The next part you can go to town on if you want. That's not too bad. So, the next bit is wet and dry. So, this is 280 grit. And I fold it so you've got a thickish bit of folded wet and dry, and then you quite literally just run it up. And like anything else, this just helps to polish teeth. I think people that have got um, new irons or cheaper ones, less expensive ones, um, you may find that the stuff is sticking in the leather somewhat. So this is the bit that you're probably really going to benefit from doing. You'll probably find you won't need to do the needle file job because that's you know, it's already sharp. It's just that you need to encourage a little bit of a polish to go on. Go. 
See, so yeah, it's starting to look a bit cleaner already, a bit better. That's nice that side. Let's just do this one because this is being quite, being a little bit dirtier. This is slightly more apparent. So this bit of wet and dry is 280. When you bend it, don't crease that down really sharp. Let it sort of be a little bit thicker because that will just help get into the, the gaps a little bit better. What you can do, um, if you get a lolly stick or, and this is actually a old clicker blade, using a bit of uh, double-sided sticky tape, you can put double-sided sticky tape on there and then you can actually glue a strip of this on there. Um, and then, like we did with the needle file, you'll be able to use that on each of the teeth. You'll be able to get a little bit more pressure that way and um, you may find that it's it's beneficial. So this is all smoothing it off. Cleaning it up. Putting a polish on it. Let's do that. It's all going to help it release from the leather um, a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Which I think is what this is all about. So every so often just fold the leather up the um, wet and dry again so you've got a fresh bit. You can see how it's wearing it and so it's this entirely because you'll be very bored watching me so I've just gone to some 400 and it's quite literally just a case of doing the same process going up through the grits a little bit tedious but it's one of those things that pays off pays dividends and you'll end up with a pretty iron that's actually reasonably well polished and that is usable can you see how this is just starting to get a bit of a shine on it I think this is, you know, it's not, it was never, although it was a little bit rusty, um, it was always in use up until probably last year. I never had really too many problems with it. So let's just, now giving it a little bit of a polish on the strop. What you can do, if, once you've gone through the different grades of wet and dry and you've got bored with that, you can actually start just on the corner of your, of your strop, just go with each one, each time. So you're actually putting a polish on. Bear in mind, this is the one that was rusty. It's not doing too badly. I'll try it in a bit of leather in a minute. I've got some just handy. So that's gone from being rusty to being clean and tidy and there's I can't feel any snuggy bits on it. Just, just got a bit of out of shot, I just got a bit of suede without any um, anything on it. So let's just try this and see how it releases from the leather. Oh, I just need to move you up a little bit, otherwise you'll get bashed. Probably how if I'd actually cleaned the uh, the dust off of the prick and iron first. Let's go for it again. Now bearing in mind that prick and irons aren't supposed to go all the way through. They leave a mark. And you saw when that release, it didn't actually jam in there. 
at all. So that to me is good. What I would do now is just give it a little drop of a mineral oil, something like a little bit three in one or something. Um, and that would be good to go. Hope this helps.